Hello and welcome to this discussion and in this lesson we're going to discuss nutrient cycle. This is Tutor Doctor here and if you ever need to reach out to me, this is my contact details. Nutrient cycling refers to the movement of certain nutrients like nitrogen, like carbon, like water, like oxygen and other elements from the environment into various organisms and then back into the environment. You know, we have the environment here. And then we have the organism here so nutrients move from the environment into the organism and then from the organism into the environment and this is called as a cycle so depending on whatever nutrient is being cycled we can call it different names you know we can call it nitrogen cycle if what is being cycled is nitrogen we can call it carbon cycle if what is being cycled is carbon can call it water cycle if what is being cycled is water and then even decomposition can even have a cycle as well so in this lecture video we're going to focus on water cycle and carbon cycle so the whole process of cycling carbon starts through photosynthesis you know in photosynthesis carbon is being used in the form of carbon four oxide to produce sugars and this is done in the presence of sunlight that is why we have this sun here so this process of photosynthesis helps to remove carbon from the atmosphere in the form of carbon four oxide and then the plants they can then decay and deposit those carbon underground into the soil and also animals can then also decay even from waste products can also decay and deposit carbon underground and after years, years after years, this can become fossil fuels, you know, crude oil and all of that. And then the crude oil can then get refined and then used again by factories. You know, factories, they can use this and then they emit carbon monoxide into the atmosphere. And even we animals, we can actually breathe out carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So at the end of the day, the end product is that carbon carbon um, dioxide which is also known as carbon four oxide gets deposited into the atmosphere and the process can start again when plants they pick up this carbon four oxide or carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis so that's pretty much the whole backbone behind the carbon cycle so we can at the end of the day define carbon cycle as the cycle of carbon usage by which energy flows through the earth's ecosystem you know it is the basic cycle that begins when photosynthesizing plants they use carbon dioxide also known as carbon four oxide found in the atmosphere or even dissolved in water they use it in photosynthesis and then the atmosphere can then get this carbon dioxide back again can get it through combustion of organic materials okay from factories from wood from petroleum and can also get it from volcanoes you know when volcanoes they erupt they, re they release carbon dioxide also we plant and, and we animals when we breathe out when we respirate we release carbon dioxide and also deaths of animals can help to you know produce some amount of carbon dioxide that gets released into the atmosphere even from the seas carbon dioxide can diffuse from the sea into the atmosphere as well so all of this process can help the atmosphere to get back the carbon that has been lost remember the the cycle consists of two things we have the the organism as well as the environment like i stated at the beginning of the video so the environment now loses the carbon dioxide first through the plants can also lose it to the animals you know loses it to the soil through decay and then the organism can then fix it back to the environment from the factories from our breathing out from volcanic eruptions it's basically a cycle and this is how it operates so we're going to wrap up this aspect discussing the importance of carbon cycle and carbon in nature so plants they use carbon dioxide which is obtained from the air to manufacture their food during photosynthesis which i have previously explained and then carbon cycle helps to provide carbon which is the major building block of all organic matter you know for example if i'm going to draw on the screen here glucose you know glucose has this structure this is the structure of glucose so we can see cho and then oh and then OH and then OH and then OH they'll have H3 here then hydrogen hydrogen 
hydrogen, and then hydrogen. So if you can see the structure of glucose here, the center, the core center of the at of the molecule is made up of carbon. So without carbon, this glucose will not have, exist. And you know how important glucose is, is to life. So this tells you how important carbon is. Carbon is the building block of all organic matter. Very, very important. Then the carbon cycle helps to purify the atmosphere and also to maintain the atmospheric level of carbon dioxide. And I also want to chip this in here. You know, this is a common thing you want to keep in mind in chemistry. And that is the fact that CO2 is known as carbon four oxide and it's also known as carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the old name. Carbon four oxide is a new name. And then CO is known as carbon monoxide, which is the old name, and then it's also known as carbon 2 oxide, which is the new name. You want to keep these points in mind. And then organic matter, which is made from carbon, can help to replenish soil nutrients. I hope you learned something in this video. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because that is the only way you can get important updates like this from me. And then make sure you also follow up for more. Thank you. Bye-bye.